Almighty Father will worship and reference you. You are the Holy God and the only God. Thank you for bringing us together to understand better the way to the kingdom as people that are learning from you to intercede for soul so that we and Lord Father, the potential souls will not be lost and we shall possess Canaan. Please enlighten our heart today so that we can have Lord Father, we can further the gospel message to enlighten others in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Please let's turn our Bible to Ephesians chapter 1, 15 to 18. Please follow this with the faith of the Lord. And please, as we do this, we want God to help us and we are believing He's going to do in Jesus' name. So I will read from Ephesians chapter 1, 15 on to 18. And the topic today is prayer of enlightenment. I think that one should be enough. Prayer of enlightenment. Prayer of opening of eyes. Prayer to actually pray for people for their eyes to be open. Even in darkness, pray for them. Those who know Christ, pray for them. We that are following, pray for us and pray for each other so that our eyes will further open to know more in the area of living to please the Lord and in the area of actually going there, even in the area of interceding more and telling the souls to come to Christ. So the topic today is prayer of enlightenment. Let us read from Ephesians chapter chapter 1, 15 to 18. Wherefore, I also, after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and love unto the saints, cease not to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him, the eyes of your understanding, being enlightened, that ye may know what is the hope of his calling, what the riches of the glory of it, and what the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. Can you see that God wants an enlightenment? Me and you need to pray for enlightenment of souls so that those who don't know actually who their eyes are not open, they might be in Christ be open in Jesus' name. Three points we want to look at today. One essence of faith in power of the cross. Number two, essential of faithful prayer for combat. Number three, enlightenment for followers to possess kingdom. Point number one is essence of faith in power of the cross. Let's look at verse 15. Wherefore, I also, after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and love unto all the saints. You see, before you can actually love the saints, your faith must be towards the Lord that saved. That's why we say essence of faith in power of the cross. Who carried the cross? Jesus brought. The, Jesus is the one that bore the cross and actually gave us victory to be saved. Are you saved? Because the faith you are having that does not work in you to make the power of the cross to be effectual, it is useless. Look at what the Bible says in the Word of God. Let's see. To let's open to John. Open the Bible. John chapter 1, and let's read verse, verse 12. John, the book of John, in chapter 1, I read from verse 12. The Bible says in that place, which, verse 12, but as many as received him, he gave them power to become the sons of God, to them that believe on his name. Now you see the essence of faith in the power of the cross. Jesus, he brought, Jesus came to us, he's the one that brought salvation, he's the one that died for our sins. So if you can come to him and believe in the power of the cross, the power of victory on the cross, then you'll be able to be part of them that is assigned to be in the kingdom. I, I beseech you today to come unto him. Even Jesus, the Lord called us. He, the Lord, the Lord, God, the Lord, Jesus Christ called me and you. Open to Matthew 11, verse 28 to 30. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy lady, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, and for I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your soul. For my yoke is easy and my body is light. The power of the cross make us to actually take ourselves the power, the easy, the easy yoke of the cross of Christ Jesus. So when you come to Christ today, one thing Jesus doesn't like 
is sin. His father doesn't like sin because he that sin it is of the devil. So if there is sin in your life, confess it and actually accept Jesus Christ so you will be converted. And I pray as you are being converted, you will not have your eyes to be enlightened as we pray and as we pray with us, you will see that you will know more. You will see more of the Lord and I pray we shall be enlightened in Jesus' name. Let's go to point number two. Essential of faithful prayer for combat. The essential, the important, the significance, the necessity, the is needful for, for us to pray faithful prayer for combat. Are you converted? So we need to pray together. We need to be mentioning them. Look at what the Bible says in verse 15, uh, verse 16. That is Ephesians 1, uh, 16. Cease not to give thanks for you. Make a mention of you in my prayer. Can you see the example for combat for those people who are in Ephesians here that we're talking about, that he has seen them, their, their faith in the power of the cross. They were called, the answer, and they accept Jesus Christ. Now he's praying for them. Me and you that accepted Jesus Christ. In today's intercessory prayer, we need to learn to know that we need to intercede for soul. If the apostle, if they can intercede for soul, how much more me and you and I pray by the grace of God, we will continue to intercede for souls in Jesus' name. We shall not be found wanting in the name of Jesus. O oh Lord, the Lord will help us. Let's look at Romans chapter 1, verse 9. Are you ready to look at it? Open the Bible. Let's read Romans chapter 1, verse 9. For God is my witness, whom I serve with my spirit in the gospel of his son, that without ceasing I make mention of you always in my prayer. Make a request. If by any means, now at the length I might have a prosperous journey by the will of God to come to you. Can you see that intercessor, Apostle Paul? He said, even the God knows. God sees me. I pray in the mighty name of Jesus. We will stand and be prayerful. Sincere prayer. Faithful prayer for combat. Combat needs a prayer. They are actually, they are calling for us. They are, they are calling for us to say, oh, I, need, I, need your pray, I need you to pray for me. And I pray the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. You see, the, why would we need to pray for combat? Because they, this, the combat are calling us and they are actually, they need our attention. Let's look at as of verse 2 to see chapter uh, 16, I read from verse 10. As opposed to chapter 16, let me read from verse 10. And I pray the Lord in his merciful way is going to help us. After he has seen the vision, immediately we endeavor to go into Macedonia and assuredly gather the uh, gathering that the Lord had called us to preach the gospel there. So as we are praying, you are preaching. Let's read verse 9. That is Acts chapter 16, verse 9. And the vision appeared unto Paul in night. There stood a man of Macedonia, praying, saying, Come unto, un, come over unto Macedonia and help us. So if they are calling, we need to pray. Before you even move, you pray. You even, your prayer for them will make them to desire the Lord Jesus Christ in you and pray the grace to pray. The grace to intercede, the grace to pray, come, come back. God will give unto us in Jesus' name. I ask you a question as a believer, potential earners of the kingdom. Do you pray for soul? How many do you have a list of people you are praying for so that you can follow up? Let's go to point number three that is enlightenment for follower to possess kingdom. So, the essence of our prayer, essence of our follow up, essence of our being attentive unto vision of the kingdom is because we want these followers to possess Canaan. Let's see, because if they are not enlightened, enlightenment for followers to possess Canaan. How do we enlighten these people? Give them the word, minister to them, encourage them, inspire them. Let them see what you have seen. Let the Holy Spirit even allow you to make them to see more. And let the Holy Spirit be imparted unto them so that we teach them all things. Enlightenment for followers to possess Canaan. Let's see Ephesians chapter 1. I read from verse, by the grace of God, I read verse 18. The eyes of your understanding being enlightened. Very important. Eyes of understanding. That's not the physical eyes. That is the eyes that bring understanding. Because if you sometimes you look at things you don't even know. You read things you don't hear. You hear things you don't understand. But when the eyes of understanding is open, it's kind of prayer point to pray and be able to go to the followers, to go to the combat and tell them. 
so that we pray for them and their eyes of understanding will be open. So that the eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that you may know what is the hope of his calling. You see, it is essential that the combat, the followers that we are actually that we are discipling, they be able to have their enlightening that they will know what is the hope of his calling. That's why we said so that the follower will possess Canaan, they will get to the promised land, they will make it to heaven. They will know it is not for the mundane things or wallet or just to say I give my life to Christ and all they are looking for is their own personal gain. Or even his personal gain for eternity matters because hmm, anybody that does not make it to the kingdom is not good. So when you preach to go gospel to them to come out of sin, you will not tell them that on the narrow way it leads to life, and the eyes of understanding will be enlightened that yet they may know what is the hope of his calling, the calling of the Lord Jesus Christ, the power of the cross. They know the hope there, and what riches of glory of his inheritance. In the same, that, that is the, the inheritance, the hope of the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the same. That is it. It is the Canaan land. It is the kingdom. Because without actually getting to the promised land, without getting to heaven, all that we are doing is in vain. Me and the combat and the follower. So we need to join together in prayer as we preach to them. We pray for them and we make it, we, we pray and they possess Canaan in along with us. As sins of the Lord and the Lord will help us in Jesus name. Are we ready to pray? Because it is good to pray. Pray for yourself. Pray for the combat. Let us pray. Father, we thank you so much for calling us together in this soul intercessory prayer. We've learned enlightenment. Open your eyes. O Lord, for combat and for us, a need for us to understand the power of the cross so that we know, Lord Father, we know the essence. O Lord, of using faith to accept power of the cross of salvation, then Lord Jesus will be able to know the need for faithful prayer for combat. We shall pray for ourselves, for others, for people that are coming. Then Lord Jesus, so that we know that they will not be enlightened to know the essence, the importance of actually the calling to make it to the, to the Canaan land, to the promised land, we shall be there in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father, because we shall not be there in law. We will have an inheritance among saints, and our combat, our follower, the disciple, they shall be there with us. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.